All right, we are broadcasting, guys. It's uh, it's a pleasure to be with the three of you guys here today. Welcome to everyone who's joining us. Um, this is a special webinar where we get a chance to not only talk about what's happening in the retail industry, but to also talk to some business owners who are seeing some surprising uh, upshifts in in the market right now, which I think is really really fascinating and really exciting. You know, one of the most interesting things I think about what's happening uh, in the world of retail is we're not only seeing so many shifts and changes, but we're also seeing so many so many different opportunities. So let me kind of first introduce myself and uh, today's topic, and then I'll have my my wonderful panelists um, go ahead and introduce themselves. Um, my name is Shama Maher, and I am the CEO of Scaling Retail, and we are an international retail strategy firm. Um, I'd say we are based in Los Angeles and New York, but these days I feel like we're kind of moving all over the place and everyone is at home wherever home is. Uh, so where we're based, um, everywhere at this moment. Um, we are really excited and thrilled to be able to partner with Off Price as we really unpack the different ways in which revenue generating strategies are happening in this particular moment in time. Um, I feel like almost every day we hear something in the news about what's happening with retail. Just yesterday, um, I think I was hearing that now items in the grocery store have now increased by like three to 3.5% on very basic items. Um, it seems like shortages and, and how we're looking at inventory and what the needs are are constantly changing. And in the time of this retail roller coaster, um, I think it's important that we take a step back and and look at our businesses and, and really start to figure out what is it that we can do today to be able to impact our businesses. And obviously off price becomes this amazing uh, opportunity and, and revenue stream for a lot of vendors, but also retail businesses, right? Because where else can you go to find merchandise in season um, at a great margin and at a great price to be able to service business uh, to your customers? So. It's exciting to be able to see a, a trade show like this pick up steam, not only in the last few years with their trade show in Vegas, but also now with um, digital activations, which I think is really exciting. And before I just continue to keep talking, uh, we're all certainly not here just to hear me. Um, I'd like to kind of have our, our guests briefly introduce themselves and kind of maybe give, you know, one one or two things um, that has really been impactful for them during these last few months as we've been looking at retail in this pandemic. So in no particular order, um, I'm gonna start with Ivan um, from Foreman Mills. Can you give us a little backstory, Ivan, on not only your business, but really how have things been for you these last few months? Hello everyone, Ivan Kendis. Uh, I'm the DMM of Men's and Boys at Foreman Mills. Been there for now 21 years, so. Um, Look, the differences are obviously we were closed for two and a half months and opened in June. And uh, the way of working has changed obviously totally uh, from home basically. Uh, that has changed the way we're communicating. Uh, thank God for Zoom and, and other platforms like that. Uh, whether it's talking to my buyers or the management or even the vendor community with Zoom meetings and everything. But uh, interesting that we're learning how to do this and uh, we're not, uh, we have no secure date of when we're going back. A few people are going in the office. Uh, I have not, uh, many have not. So I think the biggest thing is we're learning to do business in a different way. Uh, it's not perfect at all because we're in a business that is really wonderful to touch things and feel things and see things. And right now uh, we're seeing things on the screen or here and there getting samples and doing that kind of thing. So it's really been interesting to learn how to do our business uh, in a little different way, but we're adapting to that. Um, so I think that's been the biggest, uh, obviously the biggest change since we've been back for a couple months. Got it, thank you. Thank you, Ivan. Um, Ellie, please share with us, how, how biz, how's business been for you? I know you're based in LA. I just recently escaped from, from LA. So uh, tell, me, tell me about how business is going. Tell me a bit about Bacciano. Um, Bacciano, we're a sweater company. It's a father-son business. We're a family-based business. Um, we've been, it was, we were closed for a few months and uh, just like Ivan, we, we all came back to work and we, have, we had a lot of previous 
pre-bought um, fall orders and we brought everything on schedule. We tried to work everything out um, with our factories online uh, over the phone or through Zoom or, or other applications that they have. Um, and we got the merchandise in on time and we've been shipping. We've had a few um, delayed orders that people push back, excuse me, push back, but that's normal. It's hot everywhere in the US right now. Um, and we're doing novelty sweaters. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a little early, but every, the boutiques are pretty much and specialty stores are pretty much done with looking at spring and summer for the time being. They're ready for fall and going forward. Um, business in general has been okay. It's, it's we're, nothing to, to throw confetti about, but we're happy. We're happy in the situation and, and we're changing with the times as well. Awesome, thank you, Ellie. And Matt, please round us out from Rock and Footwear. How's uh, how has business been for you? What's been going on these last few months? I, yeah, thank you so much. Hi from Miami, Rock and Footwear, uh, High Tide. Um, interesting enough, business has been better than it's ever been for us um, in the existence of the 13 years of our company. Um, we have another sister company called Miami Souvenirs that's been around for 32 years, as well, performing very well. Um, we have not closed since the whole pandemic started. So for us, we haven't had any downtime. We, we keep have been plowing through. We do a lot of business with the islands. Um, and many retailers that have allowed us to keep uh, propelling through these months. Um, in addition to that, we also got into the PPE business. Um, I would say late March when things started to get heavy. And it was a very fast acting move that we did as a company that was able to generate a lot of revenue for us and to keep our employee staff maybe while we were at not at full billing um you know selling shoes it is an essential item so you know we found that a lot more people were going to the lakes the beaches uh to social distancing places where they can enjoy with their family people who had never had a flip-flop, people who had never had an aqua sock. Um, you know, it's, it's been phenomenal and it's been quite the ride. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a beautiful time for us. I, I would love, to, I love starting off with the, it's been a beautiful time. You know, I, I feel that, unfortunately that sentiment um, I wish more people would speak up who are having positive kind of silver lining experiences over the last few months outside of, you know, spending more time with family and kind of the things that I think most sure. of us are, are very grateful for, um, realigning our priorities both personally and, and professionally, um, which I think is, is kind of a emergent trend as, as we look at, at the outcomes of what's happening with this pandemic um, to, to kind of, open up this conversation and kind of get us started. You know, the, the interesting thing that I think for people who are tuning in today, who are possibly new to looking at the off-price world and kind of looking at um, business models and, you know, how, how they're kind of incorporating this kind of strategy. Um, Ellie, I'd love to kind of get your perspective, you know, uh, in terms of how you guys have been approaching and working with off price in terms of you know relationships during this time period especially when you know things have been so volatile right it's like what's going on with purchase orders how's communication happening um give us a little bit of your experience but ultimately what's been working in terms of relationships and, and communication so um we now send, in the past, we would get a piece of paper and, at off price and we would file it in our system and, and then we'd call the customers for credit cards or net terms or however we would do it. Um, now we're sending pictures in advance, uh, maybe two weeks before their ship date. So right now we're on 8-6. We're currently working towards 9-1 orders that we have that we're starting to call customers, emailing customers. We've had their emails for a long time and just emailing them, showing them what they got. And then if they want to substitute, if they want to add, if they want to subtract, um, we'll, we'll do what they, what they need. Um, we are also doing, um, we, we, a couple of weeks ago, we set up with a model to take pictures and videos. Again, um, we have the standard model, but now we're doing something where she's actually moving. They can see the product, they can see how it's styled together. 
um, we're adding that as an added value to the to the customer too because obviously when we would go to Vegas for, for, for off price we would get a lot of customers coming in a good portion would be as ready customers um, as well so obviously we're not going to have that factor we, we we have to change with the times and, and find a new way to how has that changed in terms of your resource, resource allocation internally, right? Because I imagine with, you know, I mean, I've, I've spoken with so many people who, you know, had brick and mortar businesses who are, you know, now when it comes to building out these digital footprints actually just internally have the wrong resources. It's not even like they can't do it, but the, you know, you have someone who's an expert on store side brick and mortar, they're not necessarily going to be, you know, the most uh, helpful for running an e-com business. So kind of the transactionality of labor seems to be different as we're, we're kind of building these businesses and changing them. How has that been as you've been shifting strategies? Uh, so we, we've hired about five virtual assistants that are helping us out. Um, overseas with SEO and website development. We're redoing our website um, and we're going to have to, we're, we're keeping who we have. We're not getting rid of anyone. It's, it's adding and, and making sure uh, we're on key with what they need. So we're, we're putting more time on YouTube, uh, putting more time on, on Instagram, uh, on Facebook. Most of our customers that I've seen are, are mostly on Facebook. I mean, they have their own Facebook pages, maybe maybe 60 70 percent have instagram but mostly everyone uh is on um is on facebook so we're, we're trying to approach them that way got it got it thank you and and ivan i'd like to kind of uh t turn our attention to you with so many storefronts and you know be, being able to uh, weather this storm i mean both through the lens of you know, how the, the buying seasons have been for you. You know, I, I feel like that is, um, that's gonna be very interesting. And, and then also kind of reflecting on the similar question of resource allocation, right? How, how are you guys approaching that? Well, I think that you said relationships, they're, they're critical now. I mean, uh, I think for sure, uh, more is being bought from less vendors right now. The, the ones with the great relationships. Well, one reason would be that we would have typically taken trips to different markets, whether it's in New York or whether it's California, uh, and we're just not able to potentially see as many people or some people aren't set up with Zoom or whatever it might be. But relationships with the vendors that the buyers are dealing with, I think have come into play in a, in a very big way right now. So uh, there's all kinds of challenges. Um, the next challenge we're going to find is that the COVID, which started in China, delayed things around the world. So there's a chance that there's going to be a delay, and there is not a chance. There is a delay in fall merchandise coming in. So as we get through the summer now, and it's ending, and we're getting into August and September, you know, we've got challenge after challenge. So the next challenge will be, you know, uh, can we gear up for the fall type product in time, or is there delays in that type of thing? So it's it's changing, but we're adapting and. We've gone to the ones, the vendors that have been, you know, maybe the most important to us, uh, and we've just leaned on them a little harder, you know, to get the product that we, that we need into the store. I see. So that's interesting. You talk about leaning on existing vendors and, and kind of leveraging, leveraging those relationships and also quite a bit of uncertainty. How... How have those vendors been able to uh, to handle your requests? I imagine they're they are also uh, thrilled that you're kind of asking more of them, but possibly also at the same time wondering how they might be able to meet meet demand or be able to meet expectations. Um, how are you kind of going uh, brokering those those uh, conversations? Well, it's it's an interesting thing that happened. Obviously, we shut down in March, right? Everything stopped in March. The stores were full of. Uh, uh, you know, early spring goods. They weren't necessarily full of summer goods. Well, the same thing happened with the vendors. The vendors were sitting with all the summer goods that they couldn't ship to anyone. So once everyone opened, let's say in May, it depends, everyone opened at different times. Some stores never closed. We were closed until the very end of May. So once we opened, all of a sudden it's summertime, but we found that many of our vendors were sitting with a lot of summer product that they couldn't ship in March and April. So we just took advantage of that, and many other retailers did, because look, this, uh, thoughts that there would be all kinds of leftover summer stuff next year and what we're we gonna do with all that stuff, 
turned around that at the off price level of retail, which we're in, uh, business all over the place has actually been better than expected. So these, the, the, the merchandise was there, uh, the vendors were able to ship, and we just used the relationships to maybe get our stuff before you know, the other guy got it. Ah, I see. I see. So um, being first is, uh, is something that, that really worked well for you guys. I love how you started talking about kind of the performance of business and also kind of a, a silver lining of how great business has been moving for you. As far as, you know, aside from, let's say, brokering these great, great relationships and being able to bring in product first, um, what else do you think might have contributed to kind of your, your success over the last few months? I think it's no secret that in our level, uh, the government has helped. I mean, the gov this is what really is the talk of, of our industry, is that the government with stimulus, uh, you know, uh, paying people uh, extra money that were unemployed, and people had money. And people went to, uh, I think, val the value chain to spend their money. I think uh, people don't want to go to the park. They don't want to go to malls now. Okay, malls are not the place to go. People have to go somewhere else. So I think that it's sort of for the for the off price, uh, 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 you know, uh, type of stores. Everything just fell into place, and I think the business has gone our way, and um, and and it's been very good. It's a wonderful perspective, Matt. I know also to kind of piggyback on successes. Um, you guys have been seeing tremendous success across multiple categories. Can you kind of give us a bit of insight into what has been working? Obviously, PPE is, a, is an exciting kind of uh, thing to launch as an additional revenue stream. Is that an area of business that you guys are projecting to continue to do well? Um, how are you kind of looking at these recent successes and kind of juxtaposing them with um, kind of your lo longer term strategy now? Sure. Yeah, PPE is something that we just, in addition, um, we didn't subtract from our normal business of footwear or any additional business that we do. Um, we have used PPE as kind of a leverage to generate more revenue within the company, open up new, new doors. We work with a lot of uh, retailers, uh, destination points, uh, theme parks, and stuff like that that need PPE equipment as well. Um, we've also done a lot, a lot of work here within the state of Florida with the fire departments, municipalities, uh, hospitals, school districts for supplying masks as well. So mm -hmm. we've really exhausted every connection that we have uh, for, for our PPE connection, for our PPE business as well. Uh, as for the future of it, uh, I do feel that there is a need uh, for these necessities uh, going forward. Now, our company is not someone who specializes in this. We adapted to this very quickly. So for us, um, you know, it was a, it was kind of a crutch. And we do continue to bring in merchandise, but my thing is shoes, that's what we do. And I need to go back to my shoes and thank God business is there. I'm happy to take in any PPE business that comes in. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, one thing I wanted to touch on too was um, in about March, you know, we had well over $2 million uh, at cost in cut, uh, special orders for some very large retailers. Um, and they were, all the POs were canceled actually in March. I, as a business owner, I did not cancel those orders with my factory. I still produced them. I brought them in. And you know what? I'm, I'm sitting here today looking at the calendar, which is unbelievable. And the last ship date on some of those POs was 9-13. I just shipped the last PO of all those orders this week. They went through their merchandise faster than they would have without the pandemic. So to touch on for where Foreman's going is yes, the, 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 the discount retailer, the value retailer is shining right now. The consumer is looking for that. Um, as a manufacturer, we rolled the dice. Um, and you know what, if it's something that we kept and we sold next year, then that's what it would have been. But um, we didn't stop any production line. We kept everything going. Um, there was a little lapse. Actually, um, COVID happening uh, in about February, right after Chinese New Year's uh, in China and, and during Chinese New Year's actually hurt us a little bit because that production time that I needed right after Chinese New Year's you know, ended, I needed goods on the water to get here in mid-March. Um, you know, again, selling stores that are open um, during through, through these times of, you know, pandemics or, or whatnot, um, 
it really was a hard decision, but at the end of the day, uh, I went with my gut feeling and my partners and I went with our gut feeling was to keep pushing and pushing and to, be, to produce every PO that we had in the system. Even if it was canceled, I tell you not, I have not had one of those orders not shipped. Everyone has been reinstated. And you know what? It's, it's a risk that we wanted to take and we took it and it, it, it worked for us. So, um, that's uh, that's something you know that I, I I really I really feel is very very um, very successful for our, for our story uh, here through the pandemic. I think that's great. Thank you, Matt. You know, I think what's interesting here is kind of looking at how it is very 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 successful for a fairy story. But I could search the web for it. I'm like, was that someone's Siri? Was that my Siri? <laughs> Um, I, uh, I, I think what's really, what's really exciting is the notion of how the industry and, and how our economy is shifting and ultimately what it sounds like we're hearing this narrative coming out, which is this is actually a really great moment in time to have an established business kind of in, in the off price channels and to have already that existing kind of customer uh, relationship and, and both on the you know vendor side on the customer side depending what, what side you're falling on um, in terms of being able to kind of grow and, and service this industry right I mean as we're looking kind of um, longer term at the uh, at the economy right and you guys are kind of further projecting out your businesses then would it be safe to say that you're possibly looking at increasing some of your open to buys or kind of re-strategizing how you're thinking about your future buys given these uh, given these sales, right? I mean, I I always like to remember back in uh, back in 2008 um, when everything you know went went haywire once before. Um, I remember it was maybe right around that time, you know, the outlet business, right? All of a sudden, every luxury brand, all these companies were like super focused in 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 the off price luxury business. I subsequently went on to take a job at, at Gucci, kind of running their outlets. And I was like, wow, this is incredible. Like, this is something that we had never really anticipated. And it continued, right? Like that market share and, and what ended up being so successful back then is still kind of created this whole new customer um, that has continued to thrive, right? So that outlet business was no longer a... Um, you know, just a one uh, a one time thing, and ended up creating this whole additional customer. Given the state of where we are uh, in the economy and what you guys are experiencing, are you guys anticipating that there are these new customers that are coming into you um, that might actually continue to stay with you, um, or are you kind of looking at it in terms of, hey, we're seeing these great um, upticks and increases now. What might you know we're planning on maybe looking at comping our sales from uh, 2019 as opposed to 2020 as we're doing future planning. I know that was kind of a long and somewhat <laughs> somewhat foregrounded conversation, um, but Ellie, I would love to just kind of, you know, get, get your thoughts on how you're looking at um, future planning and then kind of flip it also back to, to Ivan and then Matt in terms of um, that very same question. So we're starting to get a little bit of um, fall orders on the retail website that we have. Um, but that said, we need to put a lot more time and effort into SEO um, and to get people to come to our site um, as, as from a retail from a retail perspective. But from a wholesale perspective, we really need to spend more time building our profiles and our um, on, on the price website um, to make it a a easier process for the buyer. That's the biggest thing. Um, they made Zoom is amazing, Skype is amazing. It's, it really helps out. Um, the video quality might not be up to what you can see in, in person, but you can always, I, I mean, if I have to, I overnight samples um, to customers so they can see it and then they can process their order quicker that way uh, instead of sending them ground or, or a slower service or anything. Um, but the, we, we, we try to help out as much as we can to alleviate any um, any, any, any reason why the buyer wouldn't take the line. Got it. You know, I'd actually, I would love to kind of, and I'll come back to this other question, but in terms of the struggles that Eli is having, Ivan and Matt, you know, what are your, you know, the, the struggle of reaching 
the retailers, right? And, and in terms of making this kind of more communal and kind of opening it up to, you know, how we can support one another, um, what are some ways in which you guys are seeing that uh, and strategies and ways in which you guys are seeing that to be more successful or, or ideas to support that? You're saying uh, reaching the retail, you meant reaching the, you said to me reaching the retailer? What, so, yeah, so Ellie was talking about, you know, hey, we're trying to find ways of, you know, getting in front of retailers more, yeah. right? Like getting, okay. you know, get, getting in front of them more. And I feel like there are quite a few, um, quite a few challenges with that, right? I mean, obviously, when you have off price, um, having this digital platform that becomes an amazing, you know, opportunity to kind of grab a hold of the buyers who are, you know, virtually walking that trade show. Um, but what are some other ways in which you guys are, are open, right, or kind of seeing that, that vendors are capturing your attention, right? How else can, can those transactions take place? I think that it's, uh, you know, I think a vendor today who is not sitting at that trade show uh, or, or we're not going to New York to see them has to be aggressive on their end. I think that it's a two-way street. Obviously, the buyer will reach out when they know someone is an important uh, vendor for us. I think the wholesalers have to be aggressive uh, reaching out to buyers about what they have. And obviously, you know, the platform that you're setting up to be able to go on without the off-price show, I think, is a good thing. I think, but it's going to be, you know, it's going to be really this one-on-one -on -one vendor to retailer, retailer to vendor. And, uh, you know, it's almost like the, you know, the uh, squeaky, you know, gets the uh, squeaky can gets the oil. You have to, you have to be aggressive now as a vendor. You have to be getting to your retailers and say, look, I haven't seen you. Here's what I have. Uh, you know, let's set up a time to talk. Um, and, and it's different, but it can be done. That's what it's going to have to be. Got it. So keep keep yelling, kicking, screaming, and be as nice as you can about it. Well, we're not going to walk down the aisle of the off-price show. I mean, there's no off-price show to walk down the aisle. Right. And you walk down the aisle, and the aggressive ones grab you, you know. Uh, they shouldn't, but they do, right? But you're walking down, and they're talking to you, and then you can see what's on their wall, right? And you turn around, and there's something that looks good or whatever. Well, that's gone, all right? So there's got to be another way to see the wall. Okay, there's got to be another way to see what they have, what all these hundreds of vendors have out there. So that's a huge challenge, and we're thinking about it. And look, even when you work from home, uh, home, it's almost like you're busier. You know, it's your your phone's ringing more. There's problems. There's there's more to do than when you're in the office or when you're in the market. When you're in the market, no one's bothering you. You're in the market, and you're in the market, right? When you're home in the market, on the on the Zoom meeting and your phone rings because there's a problem in the warehouse or whatever happens, right? So it's a little different dynamic and you have to get by that. But yeah, our biggest challenge is finding product is going to be how do we keep finding the best product that's out there? Now, fortunately, we're a pretty big company and we have great relationships and we know sort of everybody and they know us and we're maybe one of the early calls they make, maybe we're first, second, third, whatever it is. So we've got a little advantage on that, but it's, it's taking a lot of work. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you for that. Matt, anything else you want to kind of add to uh, add to this conversation of how to capture, how to capture the, the eyes and ears and uh, attention, I guess, of others? You're on mute, by the way. Sure, definitely. Um, you know, uh, for us, we have six graphic designer artists in house that we use here. Um, we have 3D printers that we use for sampling. We have, um, I like to use this terminology, uh, E, you know, during the red carpet uses that 360 like glam box type of thing. We just bought uh, a device that's gonna allow us to do 360, you know, uh, viewing of all of our product. Um, so basically I'm gonna be able to preview all my product in the 360 view from the insole to the outsole to the upper to the material that lines and touches your toes. Um, and we were just trying to make it easier to, you know, get the buyer to really not touch and feel, but to get a visual feel for the product, because I could send you a picture in high resolution, but, uh, so many angles and, and different ways of the shoe, you're really not going to get a true understanding about that. And mm -hmm. we really take a pride in our, in our materials, our bulk materials that we use. So, um, you know, that, that being said, I don't get to, to have people touch it. So. Touching on uh, another thing is, yes, we're overnighting samples uh, on a daily basis. 
or doing Zoom meetings. Our showroom is fully set up with um, Zoom conference uh, cameras and TVs. So we're, in, we're, we're able to work with buyers. Um, and, you know, part of it really just comes down to how bad you want it. Um, I, I grew up under the, um, the way of life that uh, there's, already, there's always someone that wants it better than you. So, you know, I, I go after it 24-7. Uh, I joke with my customers. I tell them there's about, uh, about an hour and a half in the day that you can't get hold of me. And that's from about 6 to 7.30. And that's when I spend the time with my kids. Unfortunately, that's the only time that I get to spend um, with them. And, you know, even then they know if I, they call twice, I pick up. On the first call, I'm not going to pick up. Okay. If it's very busy. If it's a very, very important phone call, I pick up on the second call. But it, 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 really, it, it really comes down to making the effort and, and how bad you want that business. You know, if you want that business, you will get that. Any, like anything in life, you know, it's, it's, it's how hard you want it, you get it. All right, so it's basically like buck up and keep on pushing forward, right? I mean, there's, there's like, a... <laughs> uh, you know, it's, I, I don't like to call it guerrilla warfare, but you have to be very hungry. You have to be, uh, mm. you have to be a savage right now and you have to do everything you can to get in front of your buyer's face. There's nothing about being annoying. It's called, it's in this business, it's being persistent. And when you show persistency, you usually, you usually do pretty well. Um, and you know, another thing that works very well is when your product performs, when your product performs, business starts to generate, uh, itself. So we have to keep our production levels up and make sure we're bringing in merchandise and streamlining, you know, um, everything that we do on our end to talk about what Eli was saying as well. Um, our retail sales have been up over about 1500% just within the last, um, three months um we spent a lot of money on seo we spent a lot of money on marketing we have a lot of social influencers that we hire to do um, branding for our images uh, for our product um we just uh, added a new line high tide so that's been our baby we've been doing photo shoots branding videos and whatnot we're very active on social media not that that touches the buyers but it touches the end user which gives a little, you know, drive in the markets, which is very important. You have to attack the market from all angles. You can't just attack it from one angle. You have to attack it from all angles. Awesome, thank you for that. And Matt, I guess as you're kind of looking to uh, further out in terms of your sales projections and kind of, you know, comping business, if this year is kind of, you know, kind of blowing things out of the park in terms of performance, as you're looking into 2021, you know, how do you kind of take and I guess this kind of opens up the conversation to everyone, but how do you kind of take the direction of what's happening now in terms of how you're looking at, at the future? What, what does future planning look like in your office right now? Future planning, if I could put an eye on my showroom, I mean, it's lined with probably about, uh, you know, 700 plus men samples and 700 plus lady samples all to be put into productions within the next two to three weeks. Um, we have to keep plowing forward. The one thing that we're not focusing on in projections is PPE because that's business that comes on top of our normal business. Um, as uh, in efforts of business, I think this has been a area that has allowed us to boost our um, brand awareness um, within the retailers. Um, and I know that because I get many messages from our dot com saying, hey, I just purchased your shoe for X amount and it's forty nine ninety nine on your website. And, you know, we offer them a coupon code and they're very happy or whatnot. But it's not the same as them getting in the store. You know, the customer likes the, the, the hunt. They like the treasure hunt. They like they like going to shop. They like going to do everything. So as far as projections, yes, we've increased our projections over 62 uh, percent on production for next year. Um, and we've also had a lot of POs already written for 2021 um, for products. So, you know, it's, it's, it's what you, it's what you, what's with your gut and what, what, what you have in front of you. So. Got um, it. Thank you. And Ivan, similarly, you know, given kind of spikes in business and how you're seeing the market opening as you're looking to 2021, how are you looking at uh, sales projections, right? Is it, is it that you're gonna be building off of this, you know, spike in momentum? 
Um, how are you kind of looking at your future planning and open to buys kind of g given, given where things, things are right now and also, also the success of where things are? I think, look, I think we're being cautiously optimistic uh, without, you know, I mean, I don't think anyone's thinking that what happened now, which was an extraordinary situation, okay, it will hopefully never happen again, of retail being shut for months, all of a sudden demand, you know, spiking a little bit, uh, malls closing, whatever it might be, you know, we're, we're in this very different kind of um, time frame right now. Uh, I, I hope it's not the new normal, you know, hopefully we get back to something that is normal. So I think as we go forward, I think we want to grow, we're going to grow. I think the planning will be done conservatively. The nice thing about being an off-price retailer uh, and being a retailer is, uh, you know, we don't have to project six months in advance. I mean, we don't have to, you know, buy our stuff for six months from now. Now, okay, certain things we do project forward, but we chase and we can follow the sales. Uh, and I think that's the greatest way to do it. We've always done that. So I think that's, I think that's the answer. The answer is being that this spike now uh, is, you know, I think something that's uh, not normal. And uh, to think that this will go on all the way through the year 2021 for anyone would probably, in a retail end of it, I think is, you know, I don't think you can do that. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, okay, we did get a number of really interesting questions. Um, I'm sure that I could continue to ask you guys uh, economic questions and, you know, how do we see things moving forward? There are no crystal balls. Um, you know, I think what is uh, a couple key things kind of resonate here, which are, you know, going to have to hustle if you want to see traction continue and, and be able to grow business. The other is if you're riding the wave, uh, continue to ride it, but don't count on it because uh, things will things will undoubtedly shift. Um, and I think that those are those are two uh, two important things, right? Staying agile, um, staying aggressive. Um, I'm going to pop into a few questions that we received. Um, one of them I think is really interesting in terms of preparing for digital trade shows. So obviously, you know, Off Price is launching their digital trade show platform, um, getting ready for that. You know, I know there's been a lot of conversation today about, you know, yes, you have to get on Zoom, but then someone calls you and, you know, you're distracted and, and all of that. So in terms of just logistics wise and, you know, kind of planning your time and kind of getting ready for a digital trade show, um, Ellie, how are you guys kind of looking at at that, right? What does a what does this digital trade show uh, mean for you guys, and and how are you guys kind of thinking about preparing for it? So we have we have two ways of doing it right now, uh, but it all comes back to one. So we have sales reps that go on the road, and they're able to find uh, they go see the customers. There still are brick and mortar stores that are allowing their sales reps that they work with for a long time to come in, um, which is great because we're still getting uh, orders for fall uh, on that. And, in, and then there are the customers that don't want anybody coming in at all, Set aside, just, just customers only. And they have a whole cleaning process of what they do. The, um, what we're doing is uh, something like this background here. I am, I'm putting the clothing rack and I'm just showing each one, uh, collection by collection, group by group, um, for the customer and I, I, I look at what they bought in the previous year and they chose this type of body or they don't like too long of a sweater, they like short jackets or short tops, um, contemporary style or, or Missy or, or just a different look. Um, I, I just go back to what they've bought and I show them things that I've sold. Um, we've been shipping fall and we've already processed a few reorders. So um, just understanding what, what they're in, in need and, and showing it the way, um, showing it on Zoom or showing it on any app that's out there. Got it, all right, cool. And, and Matt, how are you thinking about, you know, digital trade shows? Um, I know it's, it's, um, it's hard, right? It's like, it's not, it's not there, you know? It's like, it's not, it's not real, but it's real. Like, how do you, look at a digital trade show and, and, and how are you guys kind of pl planning for that? You know, uh, interpersonal communications is something that I love. I love talking to people in person.
person. I love interacting. I take pride in my product. So when I get into my pitch, I, I often find myself, um, you know, really doing my song and dance and, and whatever you want to call it. Um, so for us to go digitally is, is different, but, um, you know, we've adapted our showroom. We've adapted, um, again, with our 360 modeling of all the shoes. Um, you know, the thing that you really don't justify out of the Zoom calls is the, the, the materials. Again, the bulk materials, I think, Ellie, maybe for you, even with the materials that you use on your sweaters, that's not something that people can touch via a meeting, you know? So that's why samples do need to be sent out. Um, the biggest thing um, that, you know, I think will be the best thing to work off of is you need to work with your customers that trust you and the ones that don't, you need to send them samples if they haven't touched your product. Um, and you really, you, you need to be open to anything, not even Zoom, not even, you know, everyone's talking about Zoom, but I use WhatsApp probably a hundred plus times a day via, you know, if it's a message, a video call, you know, we do business in uh, the island, Central and South America, Dubai. And, and I, I speak to these people via, via WhatsApp. And I do video calls with them through our showroom and I'm, I'm able to pretty much write a whole order via WhatsApp. So uh, there's many different angles to go about this. Um, and, you know, it's my, my wife jokes with me because I'll be sitting on the balcony uh, and uh, she'll ask me what I'm doing at 1230 at night and I'm emailing my customers of stock. We, we, we land about six containers a week in our warehouse. And as we land styles, I send them out to every one of my one of my 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 customers. And, you know, my wife thinks I'm crazy for doing this at the times that I do it. And but it works and you have to be relentless. And. Before, I don't like to, I'm probably coming off as a person that relentless and be guerrilla tactic and not, but there is someone hungrier than you all the time and you need to be the hungriest or you are not gonna make it. So I think it's uh, a matter of, again, you need to equip yourself with the, the, the technology, obviously, but you need to be pre prepared and mentally prepared for, for, for what this task will be uh, digitally. You know, it's, it's not, it's not like, you know, I, I used to joke with my salesman, you go to a show and you go, you go and get your orders. They love it. They come back with their little stack of orders and they're like, wow, I got my orders. Now they have to work for it. This is, this is, you really have to work for it now. Thank you, Matt. So Ivan, everyone's working for the bit for your business, right? So, so yeah. as you're kind of approaching, um, you know, these digital trade shows and really, I would say in terms of your resource allocation of time, right? I mean, as you mentioned, it's like, you know, now it's like we are busier than ever, right? It's, you know, in one case where you could spend the day and walk shows and, you know, kind of, uh, like you mentioned, you're put your phone in your bag and, you know, you can kind of stay really focused and present as, as buyers and in, in your teams, you know, how, um, how is that, how is how will the buying process somewhat shift just from a uh, organizational standpoint, right? Or kind of how you guys are going to be planning or, or thinking about these kinds of things like, uh, you know, not being able to touch and feel the sweater, right? Needing to, to possibly get, um, and get samples in, in other ways, right? How, how are things going to be shifting and what role will this kind of digital trade show play for you? I, truthfully, I don't know a lot about the digital trade show. I, I do know that when we walk off price, okay, uh, you know, our direction has always been, and we spend the whole time there. We're like there three, two, two full days at least when it was mm -hmm. two days before Magic. And we would stop at every booth. So I think the advantage to us uh, will be what you have to do is take the time. You take a morning or you take a few hours and you, you look at stuff with people that you haven't talked to. In other words, we're talking to a lot of people, but who aren't we talking to? So now you go on there, you take the time, you take a look, and I don't know how it's going to work. You know, I do think we have to figure out new ways to get things done. Uh, and we'll certainly, you know, uh, when it, uh, try it, okay, and we'll see what happens. And, and as far as how hard it is today, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's right. You know, Matt's saying it's very difficult. You can't touch and feel, but you can get samples. Okay, so 
That's not easy either, but you do it and you get a sample. And a lot of things, you know, you have a feeling of what it is. Okay, then you don't need a sample. You had something similar last year. He said it's the same fabric. We've got, you know, buyers that have been here a long time. So it's everything. It's using every way you can use to get the job done. It's not easy. Uh, and to be able to see a lot of stuff in one day at one time is an advantage. So yeah. it's something worth trying. Uh, and we'll see how it, we'll see how it works. Awesome. Thank you guys. You know, we're, we're kind of almost coming up on time here. I, um, I do have more questions, but, but I think what's kind of really, what's exciting would be to almost hear kind of your biggest takeaways, you know, the, the audience today, um, who's joining us from zoom, from YouTube, kind of from, from all over the place. Um, they are both on the side of, of being, uh, retailers as, as well as being vendors. And, um, you know, as far as, you know, kind of key takeaways strategically for you guys moving into, um, moving into the next six months, right. Are, are there ways in which you guys are approaching things that you think might be helpful for other people to, uh, to, to apply and, and, and to really be able to take to heart. Um, Ivan, I'm especially interested in terms of, you know, other retailers who are opening up their stores again, right. In terms of just communication with customers and, you know, helping them feel, um, like they're welcome back into, you know, into shopping and into the communities, you know, how, how is kind of communication, I guess, going to, shift for you guys today and, and kind of going forward and and i'd say communication is kind of the the major topic that i'd like to like to end with well look the stores are open and there's people in the stores and 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 that's not changed that much you know uh so from and i don't work in the stores and uh truthfully i haven't been in the stores because i'm still working at home but um so that that part has not changed uh the communication internally in the company everyone's adapting to it, you know, and I'm sure every company's the same way. You know, you're doing it with these Zoom calls, using the phone. I mean, I, I tell you, I had a situation yesterday that was unbelievable. My SIM card broke. It didn't work in my iPhone yesterday morning. It said SIM card failed. Now my phone doesn't work, right? And then about 11 o'clock, I lost my power in, a stor in the storm. So now I had no email, no phone, no Zoom, no nothing. Freedom. had some freedom. freedom. It's true, actually. But I, so I took a ride to get the phone fixed at the Verizon store. But, you know, it shows you how important these tools are today for communication. And if you don't have them. So, but we're adaptable. We're all adaptable. And you can get this done. I mean, I didn't know you could at the beginning. None of us knew you could. And we didn't know about all this because we never did this. All right. But over a period of weeks and a month or whatever, uh, we learned how to do it and we're getting it done and the merchandise is going to the stores and the stores are putting it out and people are coming in. So I just think the whole thing is you have to adapt and like we've all been saying, you have to work differently and you have to work very hard. And that's how you get this done. Thank you, Ivan. Ellie, part, parting words here in terms of how you're seeing um, things moving forward communication wise and, and in terms of um, Best practices or things that you've learned, you know, I, I think what's really impressive is everyone here today has really adapted well and, and is on the successful side of, of how things are, are panning out. I wish I could say that was the case for everybody. Um, but in terms of uh, best practices or things that people can, can carry forward. So I from a retailer's perspective, I've been seeing, uh, I have a, a chain store. She has, she has six stores in, in Texas and the best, what I, she's, she's gotten really good response from it. She does Facebook lives and there's like four or five people from the store. Even you see customers walking in and doing their thing at the same time. And she's just showing the garment, how it's styled, uh, talking about it, going through the next item. And, and it's just, it's creating that lifestyle. Like if they were to come into the store and you're showing them the product and having them understand um, the product, you're just doing it online. Um, I would, uh, from a retailer's perspective, probably spending a little time on Yelp, uh, asking your customers that walk in um, for a review, um, Google Plus, anything, anything online that you could take advantage of from a retailer's perspective. Obviously, from a wholesale perspective, it's not worth for me to get on Yelp, but it's better for my stores and they've all done well. Um, even using vendor pictures, ask your, whoever your top 10 vendors are. 
um, asking them for pictures and just posting them and saying, hey, I have this. And one thing that I do see is update. Whatever you do, just keep updating the pictures because you'll leave a picture from 2009 and, and the customer sees it, they've already seen it. They want to see newness from you. They want to see that you're in business and newness is part of being in business. I love that. It's, uh, I think it's so important, the whole like update your damn pictures, right? It's like some people are like, like it's that thing from 10 years ago that you love. And it's like, okay, well, you know, let's, let's invest in, in making things, uh, which I think is also important as you're looking at digital, right? If you're so used to having a booth at a trade show and your assets don't necessarily man, you know, matter as much, um, being able to, uh, <laughs> Being able to have updated assets, I think, as digital footprints become more important and, um, and as we're looking at bridging those relationships, I totally, I couldn't agree with you more. Matt, take us home here. How, how are you looking at um, any sort of best practices or things that people can incorporate? I think you've been probably the most vocal in terms of uh, the, the hunger and the fight and, uh, you know, getting, getting messy and, uh, unfortunately have probably now inspired many people to be working through the evening, sending out text messages and maybe ruining their marriages now. <laughs> but how I actually I have the best that. I have I'm I'm happily married five years with two kids and couldn't be better, you know? <laughs> well, I'm just pulling your leg. But um but as far as as far as, you know, how you're looking at um you know, uh, communication. And ultimately, I think, you know, that's the thing that everyone's been echoing, right? What, what is it that people can kind of take forward um, and, and apply today? Yeah, um, you know, a lot of our, um, even just for us as a wholesale company, our sales in-house are mostly from house accounts. Um, if it's not me selling, we have people that work in the office here that sell. Um, it's very hard to get salesmen motivated right now. They either don't want to travel or they do not want to, or their customers can't see them. Um, so again, you have to make it very digital oriented from wholesale to retail. You need to do that from your customers, whether you're a retailer with your social media. Um, us as a manufacturer, whenever a product comes in, we shoot it in 1200 by 1200 DPI resolution, which is Amazon quality. Um, which is just about good enough for anyone's website. So we do offer that to any of our cons uh, um, customers. Again, we've been driving SEO um, and, and retailers should do the same. Um, you know, uh, promotions, uh, shipping uh, discounts, whatever you can do to get your customers in the door. And, and most of all, I wanna end on this, and I think it's probably the most important thing in our industry is you need to stay positive and you need to know that this is gonna go forward and the world is okay, minus the coronavirus and everything will be okay. And the media is just the death of this country. But, but, but you know, I think retail and wholesale is going to be a great place because people wanna get out, they wanna enjoy life. So when the time is right, it's going to flourish. If you're not flourishing now, you're going to flourish. So be positive and keep pushing. Don't give up. I love that. It, it, inspirational quotes. You know, I think being in this industry is, is oftentimes a blessing and a curse. You know, it's a blessing because, you know, retail continues and perseveres. It's also just so community oriented, right? We're all here today kind of sharing what's working, sharing what's not working. And we've opened up the, uh, the black box here when in the past, right, the retail industry was just so insular, right? It was hard for people to gain access, learn from each other. Um, but retail, I think, is, is so, uh, such an amazing industry, right? People are always gonna be buying something, right? And depending on kind of where you're entering and on the market, you're absolutely right, Matt, things will ebb and flow and shift and change. Um, but at the end of the day, the consumer behavior and, and shopping habits um, continue to persevere, right? And I think it's just simply possibly category and price dependent, depending on where you kind of fall, fall on the side of things. Um, yeah. even, but, even just one thing I'd like to add, you know, uh, um, I mean, you know, even for Foreman, the location of your stores, uh, us being in Miami too, you know, in a, in a Southern location and, and whatnot, or, or up on the East. Um, also depends where your business is right now. Uh, who's allowing you to do business? Who's shopping? 
who the geographics, who the demographics are, you know, in your area. Um, there's a lot of key factors that are playing into the shopping, the success of retailers as well. Um, so there's, uh, there's a lot of ingredients and you have to feed it all right now. Yeah, I, you know, sometimes I think of retail as almost, it's the, it's the orchestra, right? And you gotta, yeah. and you're yeah. the conductor. So like, what kind of, what kind of symphony are, are we performing and, and how yeah. are we going to pick up different instruments and, and what will those roles kind of, kind of play for our businesses? Um, so those of you guys who are familiar, not familiar with the off-price digital platform, um, the virtual trade show is gonna be happening in the beginning of September. Um, which is really exciting. I think that there is a tremendous amount of uh, opportunity to be explored as we look at taking things, you know, digitally and, and what works and what doesn't work. And I think the most exciting thing about an emphasis on a digital platform is, hey, once things open up in terms of getting back together IRL and walking trade shows, we'll now have a secondary platform that we know and trust and can leverage and business, do business otherwise. Um, Similarly, today, we're all kind of dialing in from different places um, using a digital platform that is a huge, uh, a huge benefit of being able to connect uh, virtually and, and also to be able to connect in, in real life. So I'm hoping that these digital platforms become just another great channel, right, to be able to support an already kind of thriving in in-person uh, platform uh, that Alfprice has. So... In terms of my parting words, guys, you know, uh, everyone who's watching, it is uh, wonderful to hear of businesses who are adapting and thriving during today's um, market. You know, it's, it, I feel like at the beginning, everyone was so scared and we just didn't know anything. And now things are rebounding and, and balancing themselves out. And in many cases, um, seeing a really healthy and, and wonderful turnaround. So I think if anything, this conversation has been extremely uh, optimistic um, and enlightening as far as not just our, our mindsets in the industry, but also what's potentially uh, uh, possible. So thank you, the three of you, for joining me today. Um, this webinar will be, uh, is live streaming. It will be available to, to watch again. So excited to hear everyone's feedback. And, and as we guys sign off, um, just, uh, you know, any final words in terms of what it's like to, um, I don't know, uh, something personal. What's, uh, what's one of your big personal takeaways from, uh, from this pandemic? Ivan, I'm gonna start with you. Uh, it's tough, to, I mean, just being at home. I mean, it's, uh, you know, off business for a minute. It's very, you know, different, you know, cause I've been doing this a long time and being long hours away from home and all of a sudden you're home. So uh, just a whole change in that, that's-, that's uh, How are you that's keeping been, it together? I guess I that's the important you know, question. I don't know. I mean, I'm not going very many places. <laughs> so I don't know, I just, uh, but for, for, well, I'm working so much that it's like, I'm so tired. It's like work all day and then uh, crash at night. So it's, uh, but I don't know, that's- Ivan needs a vacation. That was, that was what- <laughs> Vacation, but where can you go? See, that's the problem. <laughs> Got it, and Matt, how are you, uh, how are you keeping it together these days? What, what are, are any, any big ahas from the last four months personally? You know, going out on a boat, uh, relaxing on the weekends, uh, that's kind of how we do our, you know, the Florida, Florida style is your social distancing with your family off the water. It's uh, it's it's good time. Go fishing, spend some good time with the family on the weekend, um, enjoy and and have a good time. You know, you, you we all work so hard. Um, I observed Shabbat, so Friday through Saturday, you know, is our downtime. And uh, after that, you know, it's, 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 it's game time. So, you know, you got everyone, everyone has their own way of unwinding and rewinding and doing their things. But for me, it's my family and, you know, also work. I look forward to coming to work every day. I look forward to tackling a new customer. I look forward to bringing in a new product. So that's what keeps me going. That's what keeps me driving. And I'm very young in the business, so nobody's getting rid of me. So. <laughs> I love that. And and Ellie, how about for you? How how uh, and it's not a good a good personal. How are you keeping your shit together these days? What what what's something that you've uh, something that you've learned out of the last few months? So in the last, well, I haven't. I mean, I'm learning something really new. It's um, I just had we just had our baby.
me, my wife, and I. Uh, his, okay. Today's his uh, second month birthday. Oh my um, gosh! Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, it's our first. It's our first. So the, we're learning a lot about diapers and <laughs> and just everything that you need to learn about raising a child. It's it's really difficult. I I, I tell my wife it's kind of like Moby Dick. We're 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 talking to to another human to another person and we're unable to communicate but somehow we figure out how to i know this isn't like the high life but hey <laughs> i get to spend time at home i get to spend time with my wife and we get um we get a lot of family time now which is which beautiful is great. that's really beautiful thank you well thank you the three of you again it was really a, a pleasure to get to talk thank about you. the industry and thank you thank you um and to hear about all the wonderful things that are happening in all of your lives, I have to say, it's been probably one of the most uplifting retail conversations that I've had, I've had as of late. So be well, and uh, I'll talk to you guys all soon. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much, everybody. Right, bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.